Okay, now we'll say a few things about continuity. And continuity is an important concept in calculus because as we get further into study of derivatives, we'll see that functions only have derivatives at places where they are continuous. So we need to look at this issue of continuity and it relates to limits also. So if you're taking notes on the page, I want you to draw some functions. I'm going to tell you about some different types of discontinuities. If you have some curve and there's a hole in it, then at this x value, the function is discontinuous. That's a That little point right there, or this x value, is a discontinuity. And this is what we call a removable discontinuity. And the reason we say it's removable is because we could define a function that is exactly like this that doesn't have the discontinuity. In other words, that's filled in right there. And we could do that just with a piecewise function. We could say f of x is equal to this curve when x is all of these values. And it's equal to this y value when x is that particular value. So using our notation of piecewise functions, we could we could d redefine this function f of x such that the discontinuity is removed. So because of that, we call it a removable discontinuity. Okay, draw one like this in the next graph. Uh, let's imagine a function where there's a curve that uh, has a value everywhere except at this point. Uh, and at this point, it actually has a value, but the value is off the rest of the curve. Okay, this is also called a removable discontinuity. And that's because, once again, we could define the function to be this function for all of these values of x, and set up our piecewise function notation, and then de define it to have this value, this y value, for that value of x. So in other words, we could redefine the value of the function at that particular x value in such a way that, that the discontinuity is removed. So again, we call that a removable discontinuity. On the next graph, draw a picture like this. And these lines could continue on. That could these lines could continue on in all of these cases. Now here at this particular x value, if we're moving from left to right, at this particular x value, the y value abruptly changes. So this is called a step or a jump discontinuity. Those are both commonly used phrases, a step discontinuity or a jump discontinuity. And it can't be redefined. The function has a value at this x value. And you can see that the value of the function is right here. Because that, that point on the graph is filled in, not drawn with an open circle. If we redefined the value of the function so that this point were filled in, then the function would have this y value and not this one. So we can't redefine it in a way that that uh, removes the discontinuity. And then one more, let's think about the case of a vertical asymptote. Let's imagine a function that's zooming way up here and zooming way down over here. So the point here is the vertical asymptote, not the end behavior. Uh, this is called an infinite discontinuity. the value of the function heads toward infinity, either positive or negative. For it, to, for it to be called an infinite discontinuity, at least one of the one-sided limits is infinite. So those are the different types of discontinuities, and those are easy to remember names because they're meaningful and fairly descriptive. Okay, now with those, those types of discontinuities explained, now let's think about continuity for a section. What does it, for, for, for a moment, what does it mean for a function to be continuous? Well, think of a function 
as a rule for taking input values and producing output values. You have some function of x, which means mathematically you have this expression involving x, and you put in some number x, that's your input value, and then that little expression tells you what calculation to do to get the output value. So f of x is the output value. So imagine some, some graph, and, and say you have some function here. You put in an x value, and you get out a corresponding value of f of x and that x value and that y value f of x correspond to this point on the graph. Now x is our input and a continuous function is one in which small changes in the input result in small changes in the output. So in other words if I'm at an x value right here if I move just a little bit to the left or to the right of that point, if I change my x value only a little bit, then I'm only going to change my y value a little bit. And if I, if I take that amount that I'm changing the x value and make it really, really small, then the amount that the y value changes is also getting really, really small. And I can make that change in y as small as I want it to be it, just by making the change in x sufficiently small. So I'll write this in the notes here. In these terms a continuous function is one in which small changes in the input small changes in the input result in small changes in the output. And you can see that would not be the case if there were a discontinuity there. If there were a step discontinuity right, right here, I'm going to erase this and draw, draw the case of a, a step discontinuity, and you'll see that, that this is not the case. So if, if you have a step discontinuity, and say you're talking about this x value, and it corresponds to this y value here. And notice, if I move from this x point, if I make a tiny little change, incredibly tiny little change, I don't get an incredibly tiny change in y. The value of the function jumps up uh, on, a, on a large scale, relatively speaking. And that, that can happen if there is a discontinuity there. If the function is continuous, that will never happen. If it's a continuous function at any point, it, or at any point where it is continuous, a small change in the input will result in a small change in the output. Okay, and then there's another way to think about continuity that I think is worth mentioning. An intuitive way to describe continuity is by saying a continuous function is one that can be drawn without lifting the pencil from the paper. So write that in your notes, one that can be drawn without lifting the pencil from the paper. And you can see again if you look at this picture right up here, this is not the case for a function that is discontinuous. If you're drawing this function, you get to this point, you have to pick your pencil up and then put it back down up here to continue drawing. If it were continuous, you could draw it without lifting the pencil from the paper.